Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's episode. Uh, today, I'm joined by Sarah Kuzmerich, who is the pastoral director at Encounter Ministries. She also teaches many courses with them and is a fantastic presenter and just a woman full of wisdom. And every time I hear Sarah speak, I just like take notes, both internally and on my notebook, just because just you just pour out the wisdom of God. And it's just obvious how much you love him. So Sarah, I am a big fan of yours. <laughs> I didn't tell you in the email because I was trying to be cool. But <laughs> just thank you so much for your time today and just looking forward to our conversation. So to start us out, Sarah, could you share a little bit about yourself and what led you to be part of Encounter Ministries? Sure, yeah. Well, thanks, first of all, for having me. Such a joy to be with you. I love, um, I love talking about I like encounter in the Lord and Holy Spirit, but I love talking about the Lord with women. I think there's something just really beautiful and special about conversations with women. So thank you so much for uh, inviting me to join you today. Uh, a little bit about me. Um, grew up in Detroit, Michigan, uh, born and raised, was raised in uh, a pretty faithful household, which was a gift um, and, you know, kind of did the things uh, for most of my life in terms of faith and following along and what's kind of typical. So, you know, going to Catholic schools, um, going off to college, all of those things. Um, but it really wasn't until I had kind of my own encounter with the Holy Spirit that life really changed for me. Obviously, there's so much, right, that we could talk about in our stories. But to me, that's when my life really began. That's when my story in so many ways uh, really started. Um, because I began to live more of that experience that it talks about in John 10, 10, right? That he gives us life and life to the full, like to overflow, abundance. Um, yes. And so that experience of the Holy Spirit kind of shifted the way that I did everything. So I went to college um, and got an English literature degree, which is oh. marketable uh, in the world, so to speak. Um, <laughs> but started going back to school to get a counseling degree and was working in ministry, youth ministry specifically um, around that time. So I actually spent 11 years in youth ministry in a parish and mm. then moved on to about five or so years with Alpha USA, serving the Catholic context around the nation. Uh, and then my zeal and my passion for Jesus and um, the Holy Spirit and allowing people to encounter the Holy Spirit uh, in a fresh way to set them on their path, right, of an abundant life, kind of led me to encounter. So I, I met Father Matthias and Patrick, um, gosh, I don't know how many years ago now, um, but some of my background with counseling and inner healing was a fit for what they were kind of looking for as we were getting started here with the school in Brighton, Michigan. Um, and so that's kind of how uh, I landed in at Encounter, in Encounter, but honestly, it's the Lord, right? Like all of, all of the like little journeys or step stones uh, on our on our our, our our journey of life, really, I feel like are just His fingerprints, kind of gently guiding us, or sometimes pushing us <laughs> into places yes. that um, we don't even know we need to go, or we don't even know we need to be, and we don't even know that there are people there that need us to be there. You know, uh, if you were to ask us, so. So much of my journey was marked by, um, I feel like, the Holy Spirit. And once you meet Holy Spirit, there's just no going back. And so it's great that I have the gift of working for a ministry that loves the Holy Spirit. Like I yeah. Gosh, I, I love how you describe that because my experience was similar. I went from, I can look at my life before I truly received the Holy Spirit in, in the fuller way. And afterwards, just how radical my life has become, become, I guess it is. <laughs> um, so I could definitely relate to that. So before we go even further, though, there are probably some people who are wondering, what is Encounter Ministries? So would you mind just sharing more about the ministry? Sure, fair question. So we are um, sort of located, our main, our main office, our main campus is in Brighton, Michigan, which is a very small town, uh, about an hour outside of Detroit. So there's not a whole lot going on here, I say, except for the Holy Spirit. Um, so that's why I'm out here 
Embrighten now working uh, with Encounter, but the main thing that we do, oftentimes um, we can talk about, we have a, a conference once a year, which is so much fun where thousands of people come like right after Christmas, you know, to have a deeper experience of the Holy Spirit. We do these weekend sort of um, schools, we call them of like healing and prophecy and identity. Um, but the main like thrust, like the, the main mission of Encounter is our ministry school. So here in Brighton, we have a main campus, um, but we do have an online school. And now we're going to hopefully in the fall have around 20 satellite schools, wow. um, which really consists of a two year program for Catholics and even some non-Catholics who want to join us um, to come and to be like taught to learn, uh, but to be equipped and to be activated to demonstrate um, the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit in their spheres of influence. So even though we call ourselves like a school for ministry, um, it's not about like having people come and feel like they have to join a ministry or to create their ministry or leave their jobs. But rather what we hope is like, just like it says in the gospel, just like the, the Lord Jesus invites us into so many times in scripture is that we would be a ministry we would be a minister to every single person that we meet so that they could come to know jesus they could hear the gospel they could experience his love his power his healing his transformation and then they too could be set on a path right to do that so we want moms we want dads we want um, teachers, lawyers, doctors, business people in the marketplace, wherever people find themselves working, um, you know, for their job, we feel like the Lord has positioned them to actually influence everybody around them um, for the glory of God, for their salvation, for the kingdom to be advanced. And so all that we do and encounter over those two years, hopefully is equipping and activating you in those gifts that the Lord wants to give you. And then you start to see the fruit of the spirit manifest in your life. And then it starts to influence how you live yeah. and hopefully those around you. So that's kind of the main focus of what we do. We feel like that's the most important aspect of our ministry and where I spend a lot of my time. No, oh, thank you for explaining. And I have been a fan of of Encounter Ministries for a few years now. I was introduced to the ministry by a friend, um, a woman that I met randomly on a bus in New Orleans. It's a whole <laughs> different story. But um, she invited me to the conference, one of the conferences, and I went. And at the time, I suffered from chronic migraines. And I just had always had them. And so it was just part of my daily life, I assumed, um, until I was prayed over by some students at the school and received um, like partial healing and then was prayed over by a group of priests and lay people that I knew and some I didn't know and I received complete healing so I haven't had migraines in about two and a half years which <laughs> yeah like God is so good and so that really like ignited my interest and piqued my interest in like what is this ministry and I used to think that I don't know that what Jesus did and his apostles did just ended after the acts of the apostles, not realizing that God has called us to do those same things and greater. And so um, I immediately joined the school and then got to be part of being a facilitator for the, those um, a group of students. And I absolutely love it. You can probably tell <laughs> how well, excited I am. Love you. Just as much as you say fun oh. things about me, Valentina, oh. your students love you. We have such oh. great just amazing feedback from your students so mm -hmm. see like you just joined the school right and then next thing you know here you are leading <laughs> like doing a yeah. like it's a fabulous job so that's yeah. kind of, I feel like what the Lord Thank wants you. to do with all of us in the unique way he's moving in our individual lives yes and I really appreciate what you said about like in our daily lives I remember there was a story that Father Matthias shared once that he was getting this haircut um, and there was a woman that was cutting his hair. He just was sitting in the chair and he just asked God, what, what word of encouragement do you have for my hairdresser today? And I believe it goes that he had, he got this image of a beautiful pair of earrings and a necklace that she had received from her husband, but she didn't want to wear them. Um, do you remember this story? I don't think I do. Oh, okay. So he was 
So when he got that image and that word, he was like, oh, okay, do I share this or not? So he just took a leap of faith and was just like, hey, um, I'm a Catholic priest and, you know, I ask God questions and, you know, sometimes he responds. And so I asked him for a word of encouragement for you. And I just got the image of a beautiful pair of earrings and, necla and a necklace that your husband gave to you, but you were hesitant to wear. But God wants you to know that you look beautiful and that you should just receive and accept this gift. And she started to cry and just say that, oh my gosh, yes, my husband just gave this to me last night and I put it aside because I was just, I just didn't think he should have spent that much money on me. But, but just hearing this just reminds me that yes, he does love me and I am worthy of being like loved on. <laughs> so I just, I love that example because it's just part of his daily life he was getting a haircut you know he didn't have to stand on the street corner and be like hey let me tell you about jesus <laughs> exactly. So. exactly and we all have those little interactions in our daily life right we all get our hair cut we all you know like even like you know you stop and get gas in different places and i think that's always a fun place to kind of like reach out or because you're like well, maybe I won't go back here again like getting <laughs> through you know so every I, like right now it's summer right and a lot of us are taking road trips and family trips and you're filling up with gas somewhere and it's like when you stop hey maybe just ask the lord like is there something you want this cashier to know is there something you know you want the person at the pump next to me to know and even if you like miss it which it's totally okay because we're human and we're not going to hit it every time and that's all right like you'll never see them again, probably. <laughs> so exactly. you can be in the car and not worry about, you know, what others are thinking or if you did a great job or anything. Like it can be kind of a fun way just to dip your toe and mm -hmm. try something out. Yeah. So related to that, this might be new for people listening. The idea of being able to ask God a question and expect a response. Um, in your own journey, what what led you to um, like come to this awareness that God wants to speak to you at all times and that you can hear his voice and what's helped you discern that? Yeah. I mean, obviously I think like we talked about uh, a little bit earlier, like the Holy spirit, right. Changes everything because the Holy spirit wants you to know the father, the Holy spirit wants to reveal Jesus to you. And so like that, our, our desire for relationship, um, I think is just so beautifully, Kind of mirrored or imaged to us through the trinity and holy spirit is i believe like the the person in the trinity that wants to bring us into that relationship wants to bring us to the father and so through the holy spirit through um what the holy spirit does which allows us to re receive the truth of our identity that like if i'm a daughter if that's the truth of who i am and that is my heavenly father and jesus is like a co my co-heir, my brother, my friend, in, because of what he did, not because of what I did, because of what he did, then we're in a relationship. And if we're in a relationship and the Lord asks us to speak to him and, and to have the same kind of relationship that Jesus had with him, I'm going to wager that like, that's probably going to include some words. That's probably going to include some conversation, right? And so I began to really think about like that, if I want a real friendship relationship with Jesus, if I want to be a daughter of the father in heaven, I'm going to need to figure out how this works, right? Like I'm going to need to figure out um, what this conversation could look like, you know? And, and then in the scriptures, like I would, I would find scriptures that said like, you know, I'm the good shepherd. My sheep know my voice, right? but he has a voice. And then if we're his sheep, we're actually made to hear his voice. We're actually made to have relationship and conversation like with him. I think that the hard part for me is like growing up, I kind of imagined that would look like some booming, like audible Charlton Heston voice. Like, you yeah. know, like that you would hear like, thus saith the Lord, you know, in a very deep booming kind of uh, mm -hmm. voice. What I came to discover through the Holy Spirit was actually he kind of sounds a lot like me, like in terms of my what the voice sounds like in my head. Like, you know, we do these activations, which you know so well, Valentina, but it's like we almost have you repeat your full name in your head just so that you can hear like, oh, I can hear there's a there's a voice like I can hear in my head. And uh, oftentimes he sounds 
a lot like that. And we've often, I think, discounted that the Lord is constantly speaking. Like he's always speaking to us. It's just that moment when we finally discover like, oh, we can hear him. I can tune in to his channel of love and receive what it is he has to give me. So it's like he's speaking. If I begin to believe that I can hear from him and I ask the Holy Spirit to help, and realize that he's probably not going to sound like this audible voice outside of my head, but I can begin to, 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 to press in and trust and try out to, to, to see like, oh, he probably sounds a little bit like the voice in my head, you know, when I say my name out loud or in, in, in my head instead of out loud. And, and sometimes he'll move in my heart or he'll give me an image or a picture. What I love about him, especially as we're learning and we're learning to trust and grow in this, right? Some of us, it's like very quick and it's easy. And it's like, we take to it so, so fast and we're so, so confident. For others of us, it takes a little time, just like as a little one learns, you know, to walk or to, to run or to, to follow like the voice of their mother or their father. Like we're, we're all able to learn uh, at whatever pace. And he knows just how to speak to us because he made us like nobody knows how to speak to us. And so maybe he knows like, I delight in pictures in my mind. I like delight in images, right? And then he wants to speak to me in that way. And, and similarly, sometimes it's like you move your heart in a certain way because he knows like that your heart is such a special place because he made your heart, you know? And so he'll move you in that place. And so the only way we can know sometimes I think like, is this me or is this God is to check it out, to test it out, to, to try out what you're hearing, what you're sensing, you know, like, you know, perhaps you sent something like, you know, text this person. And tell them, you know, that you're thinking about them, you're praying for them today, that, that God, God hasn't forgotten them, you know. And so you do it. And then they're like, oh, my gosh, this is exactly what I needed to hear. Like, you have no idea what kind of a day I've had. And like, I was even questioning, like, does God even still like care about me? And like you texting just feels like God's actually speaking. And you're like, well, that was that's probably God, right? You know? <laughs> yeah. And as we grow in intimacy and relationship with him, we grow in the confidence. We also grow in like the shift of a mindset, right? Like as our, our, we're transformed by the renewal of our mind, as it says in scripture, like our mindset shifts. So it's like, we're less thinking like, mm, that's probably me, but it could be God. And it starts to shift to, as we gain confidence and we grow closer and closer to him, And we recognize his indwelling presence inside of us and how he moves and speaks to us, but through us as well. That like you shift to more like, that might be me, but it's probably him, right? Like if it's good, it's kind, it's encouraging, it's upbuilding, it's loving, probably him. Um, So I think that like, there's a little bit of a journey. There's an invitation to be sure from the Holy Spirit for every single like son and daughter of the king to learn their father's voice, to become confident that he wants to to speak to them and to also enjoy that kind of a relationship. Like more than anything, the idea that like the creator of the universe like loves you so much that he gave up the most amazing thing that he could think of, which is his son, right? For you so that he could be in relationship with not because he wants you to do things. Yes, of course. Like we want to serve. We want to do all those kinds of things for him because we love him. But ultimately, like he wanted relationship with you. God, who is perfect in and of himself, had everything, lacked for nothing, looked at you and said, like, I need relationship. I want their heart. I want to enjoy life, to experience like life with them not separated from them, not apart from them, but with them. And I want them to know my heart and and mind for them as well. It's like a mind blowing thing. Um, It's a gift, right? That like as sons and daughters, we can be confident because of his word and because what even the tradition teaches that like, we can know his voice. We can hear his voice. We can have conversation. We can have relationship with him. It is an amazing thing to think about that. The God who is still outside of us and doesn't need us yet creates us and not only just creates us and says, okay, you go do your thing and I'll do mine. He, like you said, he wants to be part of our daily experience um, because he loves us and he enjoys spending time with us and he enjoys listening to us. So what, like what led you to that understanding and that we are beloved children of God 
and that it's so critical for each of us to know our true identity. Like what, what had led you to, to that becoming, I would say, almost the anthem of your life or something that you're passionate about sharing with others? Yeah, I mean, I think in so many ways, I don't know if, if you experienced this, but I would hear this all the time, like we're children of God, like you're a child of God, you're a child of God. And then they throw in the beloved, like you're a beloved child of God. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, especially I think if you grow up in church and you hear that kind of a lot, but you never actually um, take the time to say, well, what does that actually mean for me? And how does that shift how I see myself and the world and others around me? Like, how does that change like who I am? Right. So if we, because of the, the spirit of God, we no longer have to um, fall back into a spirit of fear or slavery, as it says in like Romans 8. No, like we can cry out, Abba, Father, we received a spirit of adoption through Holy Spirit. So it was like people said those things. And then I started to see in the word of God, like how much the Lord was trying to communicate to us that his view like the way that he actually sees us that I was like okay I've heard this I don't know what it's actually how it's ever actually really changed my life and then I began to read about it in the word of God and then I said okay Holy Spirit like it is because of you that I can cry out Abba Father right you are the spirit of adoption so help me begin to learn what it is to be a beloved daughter because identity I think is one of the most important things of our life right like even as human beings, we are so much formed uh, in our identity from like the first moment we take a breath on this earth, right? And, and it's usually our parents who shape so much of that. And sometimes that's a really good thing and a really positive experience. And sometimes it's not, you know, and then the world wants to shape or influence or give us an identity or tell us who we are or tell us who we need to be or what we should be, right? Um, and so there's all of these like identity influences that come towards us from like the moment we enter this world. Yeah. But what I love is the Lord is saying like, no, from the moment you entered this world, you were mine. And from the moment that you entered this world, I was speaking life and identity over you. And so this journey, I think for so many of us is to say, I know what was, has been spoken over me, sometimes good, sometimes not great. I know what the world is trying to tell me that I am what I do. I am what I have, or I am what others say about me, right? But what is the father, the one who created me, the only one, like the only person who knows every single thing about me down to like the cellular level of my being, what does he have to say about me, right? Because if you're like me, that made me think like, okay, well then he has more uh, of a, a, a right almost or an insight than anyone else yeah. could possibly have on me because he created me and he's the only one that knows that everything about me everything inside of me everything that it took to make me when he knit me together in my mother's womb and so I had had sort of a distorted understanding of my identity you know like like I said before like our identity sometimes will come from those that are around us and sometimes that's great and sometimes that's not and, you know, the enemy wants to get in there and work as well, a little bit here or there, you know, some lies or some temptations to believe things that aren't true. But I really struggled with my identity. I really struggled to believe that I was good enough, that I was lovable, that I was a daughter worth everything, that I was a pearl of great price, that I was the apple of his eye. You know, all of the things that scripture says about us, I struggled, you know, to really believe. And so it was a journey of meeting the father as a good father that he's a kind father, he is a good father, that he wants only the best for me, that he has been speaking life and truth over me from the very beginning, and that he wants to, with the Holy Spirit, and because of what Jesus did, through what Jesus did, undo some of those lies that I had been believing about myself, about my identity, and show me the truth of who I am, show me the truth that I have access to everything. I have a father in heaven who will provide everything, will protect me when I need protection, who will give me um, all that I could ever imagine and more, but mostly like who will love me as only a father can, right? And then I will learn to like be a precious daughter. Like I always kind of have wanted to be uh, in his sight and I don't have to earn it. I don't have to prove that I'm good enough. I don't have to, all the things that we're told to us, I think, as we grow, 
were kind of turned on their head when the Lord's like, no, it's because of what I've done. It's because of what I have. And it's because of what I say that you get your identity, that you have the truth of who you are. And when you know that, when you really are secure in your identity, I think that changes everything. I think that changes mission. I think that changes the way we live life. I think that changes the way we see the world. I think that changes the way we see others. Because if I'm beloved and I'm chosen, that means you are too. And so that changes the way that I have to view you and relate to you mm-hmm. and treat you even, right? Mm-hmm. And it's when we know that truth of ourselves and we're confident and secure in our identity as sons and daughters of the most high king, I think we can actually live that out and we can start to live out the gospel in a way that looks really authentic and mirrors the character of Christ because we now have been grafted into sonship and daughtership through him and are in similar relationship to the father as he was when he walked the earth, that same kind of attachment. So identity to me is like one of the most important journeys we can go on. And like I said, like it was different for me. It was like, I heard it all the time. And then I started to see it in the word of God. And then I'm like, wait, if this is true, if this is real, it has to change everything. And so I have to figure out what is it in me that doesn't want to receive that truth or doesn't believe that truth and engage in my relationship with the Father through the Holy Spirit to undo the lies, undo the distortion so I can walk out in the truth of who I am. Yeah. I had a similar experience to what you described. I, for many years, ever since I was a kid, I grew up Protestant and became Catholic and I would always hear Jesus loves you. And I even had like a little, a little wristband that said, Jesus loves me. Um, but then it wasn't until I think I was after college. I remember just sitting one day and thinking, you know, I know that in my head, but I do not believe that in my heart. <laughs> and it wasn't until just a few years ago, I was in a time of prayer with some people. And, and at the end of the time of prayer, just renouncing some lies and some beliefs that I had that I actually felt for the first time in my life, God, the father's gaze of love, like on me. And I, I like left that room with such confidence. Like I was walking down that hallway, like, do you know who I am? I'm a beloved daughter of God. And so are you. (laughs) It was an incredible feeling. And you're right. it, It changes everything. And I think that's like what you just said. I love that about like the confidence, right? that you walked out of that room like I think that sometimes the enemy works so hard against us knowing this truth like with the lies and the pressures in the world and all the ways that like he tries to influence us because he knows when we get a revelation of who we are we'll be unstoppable you know like there is nothing that can stop us because we know who we are in him like do you like I like to always joke about like you know, if we were kids and we were like, do you know who my father is? You know, like in yeah, a yeah. healthy way, it's like, yeah, he's the king of the universe. Like, <laughs> what can stop you mm-hmm. from that to that? You know, and you really believe that and you know that. And like you said, if you've experienced his gaze of love, of his acceptance, of his, like his choosing you, right? Like he chooses you um, as his own and he looks at you as such delight and such pleasure not with like some of the things that I think we put on him, right? Because yeah. if we have distortions about him, we can have distortions about ourselves, right? If we're made in his image and likeness <laughs> and we believe that and then, but we don't really see him rightly, sometimes we won't see ourselves rightly, you know, because yeah. of that. And so just like the, the gift of you saying like, I experienced his gaze of love. I experienced that truth. Like, yeah. Then if you see that and you, then you begin to see yourself you know, rightly in that way. I love that. Like, that's the stuff that gets me so excited, right? Because like I said, once you know that, let's go. Exactly. And I, I encounter a lot of women, especially through some of the work that I do, but just over the years with different people I've met that it seems like the devil really attacks the confidence of women. Like, I mean, he does with men um, and, and that's a whole different thing, but just with women, like, and then just want to know from your experience, why do you think that is? Well, you're really going to touch a button for me because I'm oh. so passionate about this. You know, like <laughs> I think 
So from like a spiritual principle perspective, like just like, let's step back and take a look at like in the world, like who's under attack, right? And I think wherever you can see like under attack, oppression, distortion, ways that like, you know, you're like, that's evil. Like something is very wrong there, particularly like with a people group or, you know, even like men or women, I think the enemy goes really hard after women, right? Because we co we get to co create you know with the lord life and what is the the devil hate the most life right especially life in him life connected to him and so i feel like women in a particular way the lord is inviting in this season of the church of the world of history to step forward and take their place um, with the confident boldness of daughters right bringing into existence all that he wants to bear both spiritually and physically even through them, right? Because we know life in so many ways is under attack, but women are a part of that, we're bearers of that. So like he, he goes after these particular aspects of our femininity, of our womanhood, of how God made us because he's very afraid of, I believe, like what will happen if women do carry that revelation of the truth of who they are. And so I actually think we should take great courage and confidence from the fact that the enemy works hard on women, most because most often because I think he's afraid of women actually stepping into that truth and that revelation and then living out like the holy will and purpose that God has on their life because they will be, like I said before, just like unstoppable. So the fact that like women in a particular way, it seems like, are attacked in areas of identity and security and, and self-esteem and belief that they can and can't. I'm like, that's a sign. That's a, that's, a, that's a point, like a red little like arrow pointing like, hey, this is actually a place where the, where the God of the universe wants to have for you to have victory and then to bring others into victory and to walk that freedom out, you know, like in the world in a particular way. And so I think women, especially maybe feeling right, the pushback from the enemy, but it's almost like, I want to rejoice with all the angels and saints in heaven that we're on the right track that like yeah. in our womanhood that we're stepping forward. And that if we get a little pushback from the enemy or he tries to stop us, it's like, oh, thanks for showing your hand. Now I know you're nervous about me because he doesn't go after cold dead fish. He doesn't go after those that are doing nothing or have no kingdom purpose or value or plan or just kind of sitting on the sidelines it's like he goes after them so it's like I don't want you to be worried about that I don't want you to focus on him I actually just want to help women focus on the Lord ignore the enemy kick him to the curb where he belongs and keep their eyes fixed on him especially as women in this season in the church because the Lord has so much for us that he's entrusting to us as like women who can bring life, who can protect life, who can nurture and nourish life. Like there's so much, not just even in the physical way that we can be mothers, but like in the spiritual way that we can be mothers that I feel like the Lord is bringing into um, fruition right now, like in the world. So it's like, be of good courage, my, my fellow sisters in Christ, right? That like, mm. that yes, the enemy may be working and he may particularly go after these areas of identity because he knows when you get that full revelation, as you step more fully into the revelation of your daughterhood in, in Christ, through Christ and, and, and with the father, it's like, you will be unstoppable. So persevere, keep going. Don't let him, you know, keep you down and don't let him discourage you. It's like, mm -hmm. literally, it's like, oh, okay, cool. Thanks for showing me that you're mm -hmm. scared of me, that you're nervous about me moving forward and like fulfilling the plans of God on my life. I'm going to focus and fix my eyes on Jesus, give him no attention and move forward knowing who I am in him. Amen. <laughs> so, okay. Related to that, I, the conference where I attend that I attended, where I received healing from my migraines, um, I actually had gone to your talk um, for women and you had talked about the story of when Jesus heals the little girl and he says, Talitha Kum, rise up, little girl, little girl arise. Yeah. And like, as you were just speaking, I was just going back to that moment of just, I remember at the time, I just felt like that little girl, 
like a little part of my heart had had died or had been discouraged by things that have happened over the years, not, not one particular thing. And just hearing you proclaim that gospel, and it was like I was hearing Jesus say, little girl arise it's time to it's time to step up it's time to, to just shake off the the dead things and and step into what i've created you to be and so i would just love for you to just speak on that a little bit and then the second part of the question i'm no, i'm going all over the place here but um in that same talk you talked about how women are like diamonds and and you described that so i'd love for you to just touch on both of those yeah, for sure. I'll start with a diamond bit, maybe, and then move into uh, Talitha Kum, right? Such a powerful, like, I feel the Lord sometimes even just, like, saying those words, right? Because they are his words, so they have power. Um, but yeah, this idea of women as diamonds, I love, um, I love imagery, like, as I said before, like, the Lord sometimes, like, shows me pictures or words, or, like, images to speak to me because he knows I like them, I think, and he's, he's a good dad, so he likes to give me things like that. But I was thinking about that scripture, um, iron sharpens iron, right? And that's, I'm like, I'm like, it's very strong and I love that. Um, and it can be a great, I think, image, like there's lots of men's ministries calling, called like called iron sharpening iron, you know? And I'm, uh-huh. like, I'm like, but what about women? Like, what's a good image, Lord, that you have for women? And I felt like he was showing me diamonds. And what I love about diamonds is like, there's so many things that you can think about when you consider diamonds like one um diamonds are like incredibly strong like you can't cut a diamond with anything other than another diamond like it's the only way that you can shape and cut a diamond is to use another diamond because of the incredible strength that a diamond has which i love and i think like if we think of women as diamonds the lord is is teaching us and showing us perhaps something through that imagery of like we actually need one another like we need one another to help shape and to become more of what we need to be in the world today. And the Lord's going to use probably other women, you know, like we can't get out the chisel and the hammer on our own and be like, if I can just get this bit <laughs> off, right? Because he knows one, we weren't made to be alone, but two, when the enemy comes and he tries to like, you know, tell us some lie or distract us or discourage us, it's so helpful to have another strong woman beside you to say, actually, that's a lie. And I'm going to cut that right off, you know, like being right there to help reshape that part that maybe the enemy is trying to deform or, or discourage you. And so I love that imagery that like a diamond can only be shaped by another diamond. Another thing is like, they're more beautiful together than apart, right? Give you a cluster of diamonds over one, like, yeah, sometimes a solitaire is exactly what needs to be in a moment but sometimes it's like a little cluster is even more radiant and more beautiful and sometimes yes the lord does place us to just like have a season of being a solitaire and to shine brightly by ourselves but oftentimes i feel like the lord's like hey how about we put some beautiful diamonds around you know and just amplify the brilliance of what um, he's made there and diamonds reflect light light they refract and they reflect light so like the light of the world jesus coming through women like as little diamonds like they reflect and refract his light so beautifully that so that you're like seeing new things and every time you turn right there's a new facet and like women are so multifaceted there's so much beauty there and when Jesus shines through you're gonna see each other and the world differently through that light and it's like just turning and like just gently sometimes the Lord just has to turn us a little way and the light moves through us in a way that like the world needs or that person in front of us needs in such a powerful way. But it's like, we don't actually have to do anything. We just have to be <laughs> us yeah. and allow yeah. light, you know, kind of shine or, or refract through it. And so there's just a uh, like a literal brilliance, I think, to the imagery of women as diamonds and it's helpful Um, I think for me to think through some of the ways that he made us, but also how he called us to be alone, not to be alone and to be into relationship with one another. And and so, yes, like we could say cutting in a negative way has been our experience, right? With other women, like perhaps we haven't had really positive, healthy relationships with women where they wanted to support us and cheer us on and champion us in our experience. And so we've almost been cut by them because they can cut right with us or can cut us, but but when like in a good, healthy, like Holy Spirit connection, 
they can shape us and mm-hmm. help refine us. And I feel like that's what the Lord invites us to, particularly in this season. Um, so often just the way we said, you know, like enemy, the enemy kind of goes after women. Yeah. I think he kind of goes after female relationships because there's power in two women of agreement in the spirit together. Like when two women of the Holy Spirit are praying together, I'm like, not <laughs> with them, right? Like I love the idea of like, you know, women together. And so like, he wants to separate us. He wants to have us like, compare and compete and kind of come after each other and turn towards you know in on each other and in a really unhealthy way when the lord's like no actually i have great purpose and power and amazing gift waiting for you in these relationships that are like you know spirit led and ordained by the lord so you know if the enemy's kind of attacking women relationships it's like sign to me like there's something really, really good there that the Lord wants to do. So yeah, diamonds, just think of yourself as a little diamond, you know, yes. every day. <laughs> just, right? Sometimes we need to be polished and we need to be cleaned and all the things. Yeah. Like I could take this little imagery all over the place, but those are kind of some of the things that um, the Lord really showed me about that. But hmm. to kind of move on to, I love what you shared too, Valentina, of like, you know, there was like almost like a part of your heart that had died or, and I think that's in the scripture actually, which I love where people are like, oh, she's dead, you know? And he's like, no, she's not dead. She's only sleeping. Mm. And I think there are parts of our hearts, all of us as women that feel like maybe they're dead, you know, or there's, there's no life there anymore. Like there's, there's, there's nothing there. And so we kind of push it away or we push it into a corner or, you know, perhaps it's even like a dream we've had or, or something that we've always hoped for. And, and so we've just kind of pushed it away and we're like, no, it's dead. Or, you know, and I think sometimes the Lord is actually coming and saying, no, it's, it's only sleeping. All it takes is a word. All it needs is a little water from my Holy Spirit. All it needs is a little light and a little life, right? And it will come alive again in the name of Jesus. And some of you are probably like, no, no, this one's dead, Sarah. It is dead. It coded a long time ago. I have the time of death written down. Like we are so done here, you know? And I'm like, good, great. He's also in the dead raising business. So don't worry. So even if it's like in that gospel where the Lord's like, no, just sleeping, just needs to wake up. You know, he can say to parts of our heart, like come alive, awake in the name of Jesus. Right. And he can also say like, like to he can also say like new life like come come back to life in the name of jesus like when you think about it like that the father raised jesus from the dead like yes for us and all of the things that had to happen right for christ to make that ultimate sacrifice and the resurrection for it to be complete right but i'm also like well that's like that means that's like what he does so if that's like what he does he can probably do it again right? Yes. And so sometimes I think we do need to be honest and vulnerable. Like the reality is that takes some vulnerability to say to God, okay, this place that I've guarded, that I've protected, that I've shoved in a closet, that I've hidden away because I thought it was dead or, or it's just not good or pretty or any of the things I want it to be. So maybe even I tried to kill it like off and stick it in this little, you know, yeah. place. the Lord is saying like, no, I can bring new life. Like that's actually what I'm in the business of. And sometimes you thought it was dead, but it's just sleeping. You know, that dream that you've had forever that the, you felt like the Lord gave you or that call that the Lord had on your life when you were a little girl and you began to feel just like the movement of God before you even knew what it was to follow him in this way or, you know, to, to serve him in this way or to serve, you know, a certain mission or people group in this way. Um, the Lord's like, no, it's, not dead it's just sleeping yeah. and so when he does that talitha kum i believe he is saying that to each and every one of us especially coming out of covid you know yes. like <laughs> what have we all been going through and so many of us had to almost anesthetize ourselves to get through and there's no judgment there because that was the way we coped and here we are but we're here right mm-hmm. so it, we're not dead we're here we have a mission we have a vision we have a pulse we have breath in our body So God still has a purpose for us. And so I think for a lot of us that maybe had to anesthetize ourselves, you know, to kind of numb out a little bit, um, 
I think that is what he's saying to us today. He is saying, Talitha Kum, little girl, arise, you know, and don't just, we're, we're not just going to arise like we were before. We're going to arise better, right? Mm-hmm. Like he doesn't just give us back what we maybe have lost. I believe he always gives us better than yes. what we have, better than what we could have hoped for. So it's like, we're going to arise not just as daughters, but we're going to arise as beloved daughters, daughters of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yeah. And so related to that, Sarah, just going back to that attribute of God as being a a healer and one who binds up all of our wounds and sees us as, as we truly are, as good, even though despite all of our weaknesses, despite our brokenness, yet we are still made in his image and likeness. And so based on your role at Encounter as a pastoral director and just the people that you've ministered to over the years, and I'm trying to think of even the right way to ask this question, but like for those who might be hearing this and said that say, yes, I want to arise. Yes, I want to shake off the, the dead and I want to live out of who I am, but I just am too broken or I don't even know where to start. Like, where would you recommend? What would you do? How would you, what would you say? (laughs) Yeah, I love that question. I think sometimes we immediately think, what do I have to do? You know, like, how can I fix myself? And it's actually kind of perpetuated a lot of times by society or like a self-help kind of culture. It's like, okay, and there's good stuff there. Please like, don't hear me otherwise. We do have to participate in some of these areas. But if we're just in the very beginning, if we're just stepping into like the possibility even, right, that he is good and he's kind and he wants relationship with me and I'm not actually maybe as broken and as wretched as I thought because of what Jesus did, right? Like not because of what we've done, what he's done. I think there's an invitation to just sit and to invite the Lord to come just as you are, to surrender to wave the little white flag, to say like, you know what? I've been trying it my way and it hasn't worked or I've been trying it my way and it's exhausting. Like I've been trying to do this all like on my own. I've been trying to fix myself, heal myself, restore myself, wake myself up (laughs) and I'm exhausted. I'll need a nap from trying to wake myself up from this (laughs) one nap, you know, like, and I get that because I've been there too. But I I feel like the very beginning of all of it is an invitation to surrender, to say, you know what, Lord, I've tried, and I'm not even sure you want me. I'm not even sure I'm worthy of your goodness or your mercy or your kindness or your healing. But I surrender. I choose to give you everything to say, if you want me, you can have me. And invite him to come. And like what I know gets me emotional thinking about it. It's like he always comes. Like when when we truly give our hearts over to him and say, like, you know what? I'm done with the running, done with the fighting, I'm done with the trying all on my own. Like, Lord, I surrender. Holy Spirit, come. Fill me up. Heal me, restore me. Because here's the thing. Yes, there's a part, right, that we play in that. But it's all him. It's all his goodness. It's all his kindness, his mercy that does the heavy lifting in this. Our job is to open ourselves up and receive. So I think it's not, and I say that, and some people are like, even probably like, that's not very easy to do. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know what I've walked through. And I get that. I do. But to whatever degree you can crack that heart open a little wider to him today, whatever degree you can sit with him and say, I don't know why you'd want me, but those two crazy ladies on that podcast said you do want me. So I say, yes, Jesus. I say, have your way. Come in, live here, make your home, dwell here. And while you're at it, could you bring the Holy Spirit too? (laughs) Could you you have the Holy Spirit come as well? And Father, like, I don't know what it's like to have a good father, perhaps, or maybe I didn't have a father. So I don't know what to do with a father, but if you want to show me who you are, if you want to reveal your heart as a good father to me, like I want to, I want to learn it. I want to hear it. I want to know it. I want to experience it. Just like you said, so 
we go into a lot of things and people want like a checklist oftentimes and are like, give me the next, you know, five steps. And I get that. But I think sometimes the beginning and maybe sometimes the hardest part is actually stilling ourselves and saying, I surrender. I give myself fully to you. Whatever it looks like, however it looks, I'm ready, Lord. I want, I want you. And I, and I just invite you to have your way. Yeah. I want to echo that. I had an experience a couple of weeks ago where like something was happening and I, it wasn't going my way. So that was like problem number one <laughs> in my book. And so um, I was just, I was so mad at the Lord. Like, what are you doing? This is not what I thought this would look like or be. And um, I was just fighting and like, just someone close to me was just like, you need to surrender. And I was like, I just have to surrender. What was that? No. <laughs> And I remember one morning I just sat in bed, opened up my Bible, and I just like wrestled with the Lord until I came to a point where I was just exhausted, where I was just like, okay, you know what? Me fighting against the situation is actually not helping. It's only making me more tired and more frustrated. So here is my most imperfect surrender. Like I'm choosing to like let you in to just whatever you want to do, Lord, in this moment, I, I accept it. And I love you. And I know that you are still good and that you are still for me. And I kid you not, like moments later, like a rush of peace came. And then that particular situation ended up resolving itself in the next few days. And I was just like, whoa, <laughs> I should have surrendered earlier. Dang it. <laughs> I totally hear you. That's so much of our life, right? It's like, after you know the Lord. So like, that's the beginning. But as you and him grow in relationship and you start to grow in confidence in your identity, it's so wild. Like sometimes that Exodus 14, 14 pops up where it's like, God will fight for you. You need to only be still, which I love that verse. I'm like all the time, Lord. <laughs> like, yeah, sometimes you just need to rest in that. And then sometimes he invites us to rise and to battle with him, to battle alongside him. And it's like, well, how do you know which one, right? Like, are we, and I'm like, sometimes it's just like trial and error. It's like, yeah. you're both put up against it. And you're like, hmm, this must be an Exodus 14, 14. I'm going to back off and surrender <laughs> and let you have this, Lord. And sometimes the Lord's like, no, actually I'm inviting you into, into this with me for you to yeah. see the authority that you carry and the power that you carry to have victory over this circumstance or this situation and to see the breakthrough, right, that you've promised. So I love that, like, experience of our identity, right, back to identity kind of coming forward. But in the very beginning, when we're just, like, at that place of, like, our first surrender or our, or our you know, re-surrender to the Lord, he's so kind, and he just shows up. He does it all. Yeah, he does. So as we near the end of our, our time together, there are so many questions that I want to ask you, but one question that's slightly off topic, but I've asked people this question in other areas of my life, and I've really enjoyed hearing their response. And so the question is, um, who in your life do you respect the most and why? Oh my gosh, that's, there's so many people. I think there's a lot of people that I would point to. So I I want to say, if you're listening and you know me, I respect you. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have to say their name, but just. I, know, I would say like, no, to be, to be honest to you, like, I think growing up, um, it's probably a very common answer, but, um, I really respect my mom. Like growing up, she was just my best friend and such a rock, you know, for me carrying forward. But in so many ways she is, um, just this woman that's been like really faithful, very strong, very courageous. She's, she's never given up. She didn't have it easy, you know, growing up and from a young age had to like make her own way in the world. And like nothing was handed to her and nothing was given to her. And, and she even chose the Lord. Like she became Catholic when she was like 16 years old, mm. which is like, to me, like at 16, I can't imagine making such a decision when, you know, that wouldn't have been the way her family went at all. Um, you know, but for her to like be faithful to the Lord and to follow the Lord and then to see like how he's moved in her life. Um, it's just, it's just amazing to me. So like, I have a ton of like love, obviously, but respect for my mom as a woman. 
who uh, it's just one facet, right, of the father that I get to see as Jesus's light shines through her that I think is really, really beautiful. And in different seasons and stages of life, right? You know, when you're a little kid, it's mom, and then you get older and then she becomes a friend, you know, and you get to see her as a woman and not just a mom. And I think, yeah, she's someone I really respect. Oh, thank you for sharing. And it ties to beautifully with what you were sharing earlier about how women sharpen women and how we're, you just turn a little bit, just see different facets of our beauty and, your mom sounds like a very very wonderful woman who has shaped you into the wonderful woman that you are so absolutely Um, well Sarah I hate to end our conversation because I would just love to talk to you all day (laughs) but um if anyone wanted to learn more about Encounter Ministries or if there are any good resources about how someone can grow in their identity as beloved daughters and beloved sons what would you recommend and where can they go to learn about Encounter? Yeah, so um, they can just go online, which I think we always say to everything, go to our website, <laughs> EncounterMinistries.us. Uh, you can find us both on Facebook and Instagram as well. If that's a way that you like to connect with people, we have uh, Facebook and Instagram accounts. So that would be one way. And there's tons of stuff, even like on YouTube, you can kind of give us a Google on YouTube and find a, a few of our talks. I know some people have found us that way where they're just like, I found this talk or it came up on YouTube. And that's how they kind of began uh, a friendship with us, we would say here at Encounter. So for sure, check out all of those areas uh, as ways. And of course, like, I just want to invite anybody and everybody, like if you're curious or you're interested and there's something nearby or you feel the Lord kind of prompting you to come, we'd love to have you at one of our kind of in-person events. Um, we're actually starting our summer intensive like tonight in person. Here. Oh, that's true. Uh, yeah, miss, right. But we have an online summer intensive. We have a French online summer intensive, a Spanish online summer intensive. So there's all these ways that you can kind of begin a connection and to explore more, you know, how the Lord may be inviting you to join us. Um, that would be one thing. Yeah. And then I don't know, there's so many, there's so many that I would list about like identity, but there's some, um, I don't know if you ever heard of John and Stacy Eldridge, but yes. some, just some beautiful kind of beginning books and not everybody, you're gonna, maybe you won't love everything about it, but I think there's like just some beautiful context for our, uh, especially masculinity and femininity. Um, yeah, and then Theology of the Body, like anything on Theology of the Body, but particularly for women, if you have not read and you're in a place to wanna like dive into something, um, St. John Paul II's Letter to Women, it's 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 beautiful and it's stunning uh, and it's mm. definitely a gift you know to us in the church and that's a part of our identity right is like our womanhood and the idea of like theology of the body i think is is also a beautiful aspect that the lord is is really speaking into in this season oh, thank you sir and i actually have not read the jp2's letter to women so i will read that this week out. yeah there's a ministry called endow oh yes yeah on it so there's like a whole bunch of studies Mm -hmm. you can get um from that and then lisa brenkenmeyer has an amazing ministry walking with purpose for women especially does a lot of identity focus so there's just there's stuff out there you know when you start poking Mm -hmm. around um but yes check all of those things out all right well thank you very much sarah for your time and i would love for you to close us out in prayer yeah sure i'd love to in the name of the father son holy spirit amen Oh, Father, we praise and thank you for the gift of each woman, each person listening to this podcast right now. I ask that your Holy Spirit would fill their hearts afresh, would heal any place that needs healing, would bring the love of, um, yeah, the love between you and your son, Jesus, the love of the Father and the Son, Holy Spirit, would you bring that to each of our hearts? Holy Spirit, I ask that you would help to renew our minds, that you would give us sound minds, minds, that we would be steeped uh, in the truth of who we are. And I ask that even um, just out of your kindness, your graciousness, you would release perfect identity over each of us. That anything that's one of you would just have to leave and it would be replaced so fully, so completely by the truth of who we are as your precious daughters, as the apples of your eye. 
I ask that your precious blood, Jesus, would just cover everyone listening to this podcast right now, that they would um, feel the protection and the new mercy that comes with your precious blood. And I pray that even as they step out in greater confidence, they would have a sense of your presence, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in their life. And in a particular way, Blessed Mother, we ask your mantle to be wrapped around each woman on this podcast, that they would be protected, but also just shown the beauty of your heart and what it is to walk as a woman full of grace, who's also not afraid of the enemy. So we thank you, Blessed Mother, for your intercession. Just bless every person. Let your favor rests upon them that they may know that they now and now they are loved just as they are in this moment. And we ask this all in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Amen. 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 Oh, well, thank you again, Sarah. This has been a true joy. Thanks for having me. It's so fun. Yes. Oh. And thank you all for listening and we look forward to seeing you at the next episode. God bless you. Bye.